Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the More Life podcast. This is episode seven, another Family Ties episode with my parents. Mommy and Daddy, I'm so excited to finally have you on. We've been waiting for this for so long. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, yeah, it's a you. pleasure to be here. Is it your first time on a podcast? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, we have some questions um, a few to get through, dig deeper a little bit. And this is only the first episode with the parents. So we might come back another time if they enjoy it. Um, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well. I did ask you all to send through some questions on Instagram. So I've got those for us. Not all of them, but we'll save some for the next time as well. Okay. I'll let you introduce yourselves to the people. Um, we might start with Daddy. Okay, yeah. So my name is uh, Z Bebe. Full name is Bonele Mklara Bebe. Mm -hmm. And I am a geologist. Yeah. What does um, your name mean? So my name means uh, seed for yourself in this world. Nice. So I'm the only boy apparently out of six girls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. um, mommy? So my name is Judith Nyarazo. And Nyarazo means to comfort. So I'm a comforter. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a social worker. Yeah. Uh, which really fits in with my name. I'm just meant to help people, assist people. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, we are going to get straight into it. Um, first question is, what is your favorite part about being a parent? Okay. Let's start with mommy. <laughs> All right. My favorite part of, um, of being a parent is just enjoying um, seeing my kids do um you know, funny things, um, achievements in mm. school, um, watching them grow up, uh, seeing how they transform, like yourself, mm -hmm. you've transformed from being um, the little baby, you know, hi hyperactive mm. baby, yeah. uh, to being a mature um, lady, and yeah, just, you're seeing your kids So happy. seeing different seasons, and mm. yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Daddy? Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, What's interesting as a parent is just, uh, as uh, Judith has said, just watching you guys grow up. Mm -hmm. To me, it's uh, being a parent is just watching a miracle of just kids coming in. I think of the time we started, the two of us, mm -hmm. with no kids at all, and now we've got four. Mm -hmm. So it's like a miracle. And so when we watch you, you know, grow, do things, particularly achievements, Mm -hmm. We actually get so excited. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you've mentioned seasons and experiences and, you know, kids growing and changing. Um, what do you think has been your favorite season of my life so far? Well, um, watching you start school mm -hmm. and then watching you finish high school and watching you graduate mm -hmm. and just watching you... Um, serving people in the community, serving people at church. Um, those have been my favorite seasons. So the milestones, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think it's the same as, as what uh, Judith has said. You know, mm -hmm. the, those milestones, mm -hmm. definitely it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to, yeah. you know, like for you, definitely you have had, you know, from the time when you were young, mm -hmm. I think you were just so full of energy, yeah. so full of life. <laughs> I think so and many people would might even disagree. I don't know if you've noticed a change in me or if it's people that see it, but I think a lot of people would say, oh, I'm very calm and relaxed. When you say full of energy, high, whatever, everything like that, I think there's some people that go, oh, Gugu, -goo, she's always so quiet, so calm. And <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> nothing but that. Yeah, okay. Do you think I'm calm now? Definitely you or are. Or quiet or relaxed. Uh, definitely. <laughs> if we were to ask my mom um, about how you used to behave when you were a Day or a toddler, mm -hmm. uh, she would be surprised that you're this calm because you were always active, you know, sorting things out and a little mm -hmm. bit of mischief, but it was good mischief. It was <laughs> intelligent mischief, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Um, alrighty, what is your least favorite part of being a parent? When you get sick, uh, watching you sick, mm -hmm. um, watching you in pain. Mm -hmm. That's the worst that a parent wants to, um, uh, you know, to a situation that they want to be in. Um, I've watched you, watching you cry, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because obviously I'm not a parent, but just seeing like from younger brothers, like you're saying, when you see them in pain, see them cry, all that sort of thing, yeah. you can only imagine how much more you'd feel that as a parent. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you, Daddy? Yeah. So for me, I think uh, the... Least favorite part. <laughs> the least favorite part is when I have to discipline the kids mm-hmm. or when I have to reprimand you, uh, rebuke you, maybe for doing something that is not the best mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, in the house or, you know, misbehave, mm-hmm. I think I find that to be very, yeah, that's the least part of, my, of part. parenting. Yeah. 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 Um, you've already briefly mentioned milestones and those are the things that you like about parenting, but is there any memory, just one memory that you can say really stands out to you from being a parent? It doesn't have to do with me. It could be with um, the boys. Mm-hmm. I think for me, um, an occasion that really um, stood out for me um, in terms of a happy um, or funny, hilarious episode was when we had uh, visitors come home and they went into your bedroom and they took all their things out of their bags and Mm -hmm. because you, you know... Ever since you're a baby, you've always been that sort of person who loves order and organizing mm. things. I always tell people I'm, I like things a certain way. I always organize things, separate yeah. colors. My closet is color coded. I have a reset day on a Saturday exactly. morning. Every day. You're like your dad. Mm. Um, how old is I here? So you were, you're actually, how old are you? I think you should have been five, six. No, less than five. Yeah. You had just started talking and you were like, Whoa, these girls have messed up the house. These girls, girls from Katanga. Girls from Katanga have messed up the house. It's like a ghetto part of Norton. Yeah. And um, those girls will never forget that. We mm. don't forget that because you were really concerned about your bedroom being um, messed up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just that stands out for me the way you were organized from a very early stage, mm-hmm. even when you were not able to talk. I know you've asked me to give you one example, but I don't think I can miss this one. When you were sorting out uh, freezers. Mm-hmm. Freezers are like, um, what would you call them here? Like mm-hmm. super dupers? Mm-hmm. Super dupers. Or, um, yeah. Frozen. Idea, so yeah. my my mom um, used to make or manufacture uh, super dupers. We used to call them freezers in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. And Google would get to the baskets that had mixed colors and sort them and take them out and put them in the same colors mm-hmm. and same numbers and same sizes. She had amazing um, sorting skills. And you're saying at the time I hadn't really learned colors or knew what blue was or red. I was yes. just seeing you, them. You didn't know colors. You didn't know numbers, uh, sizes and mm-hmm. shapes, but you just did that. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question was, what is your favorite memory as a parent? And it doesn't ah, yes, have to yeah. be related to me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so for me, um, I remember the times when we were traveling every time, like every three months, mm-hmm. traveling from Harare to Johannesburg mm-hmm. and going to West Africa on planes or flying mm-hmm. as a family, holidays, just holiday times. Mm-hmm. I think those are very memorable times for me with the boys with you and as a family. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. Um, I don't know if you're up to date with the last Family Ties episode <laughs> with the boys, but um, they also said, one of them said, um, holidays are the favorite memories. Yeah. And then I added to that, what's interesting is the one memories that stick out in holidays are the ones where things didn't go as planned. So, yeah. you know, when, and I always use the Toowoomba example when we went to Toowoomba <laughs> and we snowed, it's just a funny memory <laughs> as you can hear. Or the other one is... The camping um, one? Yeah, I was going to say Kanye Gorge. Yeah. Where, <laughs> um, it's one where, looking back, I actually think we probably were very unforgiving with daddy to say, you know, you brought us here, it's so boring, but you were also tricked, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was having said, I think I said uh, three days ago to, mm-hmm. to my friends or my workmates, mm-hmm. I talked about that uh, incident that we no longer <laughs> go camping. We have to go now to either where there are chalets or hotels. Yeah. Because but, the girls in my family, they said, no. <laughs> We're not doing that again. But it's they're good memories. Actually, I was speaking to a friend today who's never been on a family camping trip just because that's not something they do. 
And I remember, I think I went to mommy a while ago and said, did you know that there are families that don't go camping? Because I always assumed it was just a, a thing that people do. But mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. This one is, um, can be controversial if um, the grandparents ever get hold of this. Um, do you think you're a, a bear, better parent than your parent was to you? No, I don't think so. I think um, my mom was a better parent. Um, in saying that, I think I've learned a lot from her. Mm-hmm. And there's some things um, that she did as a parent that I wish I could um, actually do with you. But times have changed. Mm. Um, so I think my mom was a better That's parent. Mm. So for me, I think it depends what we we look at. Mm-hmm. I think there are areas that my parents were better. Mm-hmm. They were doing it better than we are doing it or we have done it. And then there are areas that we have also, I feel I'm better than my dad. Mm-hmm. For example, I can give an example of attending sports. Mm-hmm. So my dad, you know, of course he was very far. But I don't think he has ever watched any of my sports, you know, sports like games. activities mm-hmm. at school. But I, of course, this is, it depends where we are. Like where we are now, we have to drive the boys to mm-hmm. the yeah. sports. We have yeah. to it's take the boys. It's a big commitment, isn't it? It's a, it it's is. a big commitment. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, I say, I think we are better mm-hmm. because of circumstances. Yeah. or so we are forced to do it. So mm-hmm. we are better than yeah. our parents. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now on to some of the questions that people asked on Instagram. Um, people asked some questions where I thought, okay, we're not going to ask that on here. It's a public, <laughs> they, don't, they want to get you cancelled essentially. Um, but uh, the first question was, what is it like to immigrate to new countries with children? Mm. Mm. It wasn't easy when you were younger mm-hmm. because obviously you have to adjust to the environment it was also exciting to see you being excited, yeah. uh, being in a new environment. So it's a mixture of challenges and excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'll just add in here to because especially if this is the first episode you're watching. Um, so we, I was born in Zimbabwe, and then from there we moved mm-hmm. to Gabon, which is in West Africa. South Africa. Uh, South Africa for a bit. And then Gabon, and then the DRC, um, Democratic Republic of Congo, then to South Africa, then to Zimbabwe, then to the US, then here. So when it comes to immigrating with children, you probably have, you would say you're experienced, you mm. know the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I um, just thought I'd fill that in there. And um, yeah, Daddy, what do you think, what, is, what was it like traveling and immigrating with children? I think uh, the most uh, difficult part or interesting part was I used to fill all the forms. Yeah, the <laughs> that's true. That and the kids would, be, you know, you will be playing mm-hmm. or doing whatever you're doing and mommy will be doing something and yeah. I will have to go through all the six forms, documents and, documents <laughs> and you know, passports and uh-huh. all that. I haven't but even I think, thought about that. <laughs> yeah, having said that, I think it was exciting, mm-hmm. I should say. Yeah. He, you know, that's t- sort of, uh, you know, looking forward to, 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 to living in another country or seeing a new place. Mm-hmm. I think it has been sort of a family highlights or yeah. excitement. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Um, it's interesting. I very clearly remember the first time you handed us a form and said, here's your passport. Just copy those numbers onto that section there. <laughs> and that was the first time we started filling out our own forms. Um, I'll just add in here, this isn't an Instagram question, but people mm-hmm. often ask me, um, why did you move so much? My answer has always been, oh, you know, my dad's a geologist and so if things mm-hmm. come, came up, he would just move and he was happy to take new opportunities. But what would be your answer? Yeah, I think you can say that. Definitely, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, wanting to, you know, uh, see new areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, a, a geologist, yes. Yeah. And, you know, following in passion or profession Mm -hmm. but there's also like when you move to the u.s it wasn't really going for 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 work as such Mm -hmm. it was just for what i would call like a change of life yeah yeah you know coming from a third world country to a first world country america being probably world number one it was known as like there's the american dream that you heard yes so so following your dreams and Mm -hmm. things like Mm -hmm. that yeah yeah that's good Mm -hmm. um what inspires you? 
is a question from Instagram. Mm. And I'll add to it just to um, add a little bit more context or um, something else around it. Um, what inspires you to keep going every day? Mm. I think once we had children, um, you inspire me to, you know, to, to go on every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I've got this inspiration from within and then purpose, this is where purpose also comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I can say my family yeah. inspires mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, I think it's uh, more of the same purpose. Mm-hmm. So what inspires me definitely is God inspires me. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, myself or ourselves, I feel I get inspired by saying I'm here for a purpose. Mm-hmm. For a purpose as a father to look after the family for a purpose as a husband, for a purpose probably in the community. So that actually inspires me. Yeah. I feel I've got a purpose, I've got something to do. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really good. Another question from Instagram. This one's going to take a little bit of a turn from parenting, mm. but how did you both meet? Um, and they said, I'm looking for ideas. <laughs> mm. Yeah, do you want to start? Yes. I will correct you if I'm <laughs> Uh, so Z and I met um, via my dad, through my dad. Mm-hmm. Z worked with my dad. And um, it happened that he was actually um, bodied up. Like he had a buddy mm-hmm. who happened to be my younger brother who was doing his school experience. And mm-hmm. he wanted to... Um, do some geology experience or have some geology experience. Mm-hmm. So he ha- ended up being uh, paired with paid up with Z, mm-hmm. and then uh, Z came home to drop off my brother, mm-hmm. and then yeah, we became friends. Friends immediately, mm-hmm. or was it romance immediately? I think it started well before we even met because I had heard from Joseph, the brother, that oh, I've got, you know, four sisters, this and that. And we started talking, and we even mm-hmm. were talking over the phone mm-hmm. before we even met. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. And then I think I brought a present. Mm-hmm. It, oh, yeah, yeah I, I remember. Yeah. So he he got me <laughs> this, um, what do you call it, the one for pounding? A pistol? Uh, um, motor and... Yeah. Pestles, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember them from science. Small one, <laughs> yeah. Small one. It and was a t-shirt. A, it, yeah, it was actually we call, we call them curios in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's a nice t-shirt written. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it was a nice t-shirt um, from Chimani Chimani Mani, Mani, Chimani Mani Mountains, Man, mm-hmm. which Chimani is the Mani eastern Mountains. highlands of Zimbabwe, and mm-hmm. a few decos to put in my classroom and she was really I thought that was really cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and for context, I'll add, um, mommy used to be a teacher. Um, which is why she was talking about her classroom. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, f- yeah. Yeah. yeah so from uh, my side for ideas, mm-hmm. I think uh, what I can say or if I could advise anyone is everyone or e- every couple, mm-hmm. they've met in different ways. Yeah. They've met in so many different ways. So what it is, is it's God-given Mm-hmm. It's a uh, certain serendipity. Yeah. Yeah. It just happens, mm-hmm. but you just have to be out there and watch out. Oh, so I can't stay in my room, is what you're saying? <laughs> yes, yeah. You have to be out there and watch uh, out. Yeah. yeah. And, Especially in Brisbane, mm, you have to watch out. Yes. So, so get her out there. <laughs> in terms of ideas on where to meet people, mm-hmm. um, you know, I believe you can meet people anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that you have to have a positive attitude to everyone you meet. Mm. I'm not saying date everyone that you meet, but I'm saying that you just never know who the uh, the person uh, might be or you might be uh, nasty or rude to someone you meet and they're actually meant to be your life partner. Mm-hmm. So be good to everyone. You just never know why God is sending that person in your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, uh, having uh, what Judith is saying is actually very true. Mm-hmm. I can think of my mother, how my mother met my dad. Mm-hmm. It was actually my dad's friend who met my mother. 
Okay. Yeah, and then uh, he went to my dad and said, Spambano, I met this girl. I think she will be a match for mm. you. Mm -hmm. So what Judith is saying, that be nice, be someone who is just to everyone and not looking forward to anything, mm -hmm. but just be nice. Yeah. I think yeah. my mother was nice to this friend mm -hmm. who actually had a girlfriend, yeah. mm -hmm. but my dad didn't have a girlfriend and therefore recommended and <laughs> now I'm here. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's yes, cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, 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 what is it like to pursue your own aspirations while child rearing? I really don't like that word, rearing, but mm. while yeah. raising children. Well, it's, it's quite, uh, it can be challenging mm -hmm. at times. I remember... Um, working full-time, studying full-time, and also having the four of you going to school uh, without help here in Australia. Mm. And that was challenging, studying for exams, writing ex assignments. But, um, you know, you get the strength and the motivation when you think, look, I'm doing it uh, for these children, mm -hmm. so I need to do it. Yeah. And, yeah, it can yeah. be challenging. That's yep. true. And um, I guess an example of showing that it is possible is the fact that you've done it, worked in a few different industries. So between teaching and social work, you've mm. even jumped around and you're still able to study. Nursing. But yeah, yeah, nursing as well, um, working in a bank, everything like that. But it is possible, but I think you're acknowledging that it's not easy. Mm. Um, and maybe, I don't know if this is what you'd say, not everybody can do it. But do yeah. you think... I think not everyone can do it because mm -hmm. we had people dropping out, yeah. deferring from um, the courses that we had started uh, because it was just too much for them there to take care of their children. Mm -hmm. So I would advise people, whilst they're still young, to just you know study, pursue their studies, mm -hmm. do as much as you can mm -hmm. um, yeah, before you have children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think I can say in terms of studying even raising children and working, raising children. I think it's, uh, as Judith said, it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. But definitely for me, I would go to work and say, look, I'm working for these children mm -hmm. or for my family, mm -hmm. right? I am also, when I'm driving at work, I've been driving or doing whatever I do, one thing that I want to do is to go back home mm -hmm. to my family. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that I try to be safe so safety is a big thing, particularly in the mining industry. Mm, yeah. You don't want to kill people. You don't want to be killed. So yeah. you want to be safe and go back home to raise your, your children. Mm. And also in terms of studying, I think I always caught, you know, uh, uh, Albert Einstein mm -hmm. who said, uh, uh, when the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Mm. So yeah. to me, it's... In the, so though raising children or a family, mm. you need to study, mm. you need to be out there reading, you also need to be definitely working and looking at, you know, developing your career. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've seen as a problem is people stop certain aspects of their lives mm. to concentrate on one thing, like academics. Yeah. They stop the whole life mm. to mm. do academics. But I think it should be balanced, studying, family and work at the same time, mm. you should just balance that I'll out. just add, when you speak about learning or studying, I think for some people it might not be that they need to do a new degree or whatever, mm. but it might be that, you know, they're now learning an instrument or now learning a new sport. Or, or new you know, I, yeah. I think aspirations isn't just educational. It could be, or, mm. yeah, academic. It mm -hmm. could be learning something new, yep. but in yeah. a different field or mm. something different. Mm. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree yeah. With that. And a person without uh, dreams or goals, um, is as good as dead. That's what I believe. I believe always have those aspirations, always have those dreams. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, already. Someone said, how does it feel to raise such a baddie? I don't know if you guys know what that means. A baddie? <laughs> a baddie. <laughs> a bad person? No, a baddie. It's like an, um, a slang term for a woman who can hold her own and take care of herself. It's pretty and independent. I'm pretty sure someone said uh, that in as a joke. <laughs> yeah. So mm. I, I took a video of you. Oh, you were not aware. 
mm-hmm. uh, that I was taking a video of you, um, and I sent it to you later. Yeah. Uh, whilst you, you know, you you parked your car in front oh, yeah, of the I put, door. I posted that on my Instagram recently. <laughs> and then you were cleaning the car, and then you walked in. You didn't know I was I was taking that video, mm-hmm. and uh, I just thought at that moment that look, this is my girl, that I've empowered. She can do everything on her own. She's um. A, She's a professional. She can um, she can survive on her own, really. And whoever marries her mm-hmm. has got to be, you know, intelligent, wise. Um, I don't know. In, it's like you're putting out an advert. <laughs> no. In, in, in my culture, or in, in, in Debele, we say, in Doda um, meaning it has to be, a man, a real man with visions and aspirations and dreams and goals. You know, you can't be a, a weakly lazy guy because mm. you you're a go getter. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I think it's uh yeah, it's a bit scary. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's scary, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's not, it's not scary, but it's uh it's definitely uh, I think. Uh, uh, something that we are really proud of, mm-hmm. you know, that you, we have raised someone who has become so confident mm-hmm. and you have become who you have been, you know, of course, by God's grace, but it's also the way you push through mm-hmm. things. So definitely we are proud of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this might be a conversation for another day, but you've, we've talked before mm-hmm. about the concept of independence versus hyper independence and you know where where do you push that line what's the balance that sort of Mm. thing so i think that'll be an interesting conversation to have on the podcast so stay tuned for that Mm. um all right we've only got three more questions um but firstly it's time for tea so time for tea is a new segment on more life where we talk about just what's happening on the internet just tea so things like going viral (laughs) people whatever (laughs) Mm. anything like that um we might start getting teacups out the next time we do the segment but um the a video that was trending on the internet recently is a man who was talking about how um children with the same biological parents don't ever have the same parent they're always going to be treated differently, slightly different principles. You know, times have changed over time. Mm. The parent is now parenting differently, that sort of thing. Um, would you agree with that? Do you think there's any difference in the way that you've parented, for example, me and Vusa being the older ones and Dan and Andy being the younger ones? Yeah, definitely, because that you learn. You learn every time uh, with every experience that you have with each child. Mm. And I think because you and Vusa uh, don't have that huge of a gap, between you two guys so my parenting um with you and Vusa is is similar Mm. and it's quite different to how I've parented um Andy and Dingani because um you know there's obviously that huge uh, how many seven years difference and also because of the environment Mm. so we were so strict with you and Vusa and um, in a way, it has taught you guys to be responsible people. Uh, I'm not saying that the younger boys are not responsible, <laughs> but all I'm saying is you're what you are because of the environment, because of how we parented you then. Mm-hmm. And remember, being new parents as well, you being the eldest, um, we, had, we put all our energy everything yeah. yeah all the research everything experimented but what to were, expect when you're expecting yeah, you're, you're like <laughs> our little uh, guinea experiments pig. <laughs> <laughs> guinea pig yeah oh, okay that's interesting yeah i think i agree with what judith has said definitely mm-hmm. for us i think it's geographical mm-hmm. the different environments so we raised uh you were like up to 10 years mm-hmm. in zimbabwe or in africa yeah. which is a different environment Mm. Where we had maids, we had people looking after you. We had, uh, you know, the, the house village. was clean. <laughs> everything mm. was life was like really. And being know, expats as well, you would have had everything done. For you. We had everything done for, so it was easier for you guys. And we, like Judith has said, in terms of discipline, we also had, uh, you know, uh, African discipline. Yeah, I think you know what I mean by that. Which is illegal here. <laughs> which is which can be legal here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who wouldn't stick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't oh, stick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't think we use that much. No, but the never. thing was, 
when we said hey you know and we say come you come mm. when we say go you go but now having changed the environment mm. being in australia where probably the young boys mm. they can challenge us and say why did he yeah mm. you know you'd never used to say that do you, you know. think um that's something that's come from outside the house or is that also on you being more lax or more relaxed or for example like why is it that mm. if they've mm-hmm. grown up in this house here they don't have or they still sort of challenge your um decisions I, I don't more? think it's negative challenge mm-hmm. but it's genuine challenge they want to know why yeah yeah like i remember the other time when uh, andy said uh, i think judith said hey put on your jersey and he said why you don't have a jersey also you know it's a genuine question <laughs> yeah. but you wouldn't do that i think you said yes, yeah. either me or visa used to do that as well i think it was you when um mm-hmm. if you want to tell the thai story about yeah. wearing a tie <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah it was visa questioning why do men have to wear ties or oh, yes, yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then you said you know because it's for work and say so, okay but it's, why because it looks formal why because it it's proper mm. why <laughs> but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think with the boys it's not obviously we've been a bit slack with them mm-hmm. uh because we are busy very busy in this environment mm-hmm. and like home I think I had more time with you my job wasn't um you know as challenging as here I was a school teacher and I had all the holidays to mm-hmm. you know, And you might not kids. use the word slack it might just be that there's more freedom or more yeah. relaxed or that's yeah. Sort of thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think because you're busy sometimes you overlook things mm-hmm. and yeah yeah Um but you've done well they're good kids mm-hmm. <laughs> Of course internet internet hasn't helped us so Yeah that's true mm-hmm. Yeah I What mean, um what would you say have been your challenges with the social media or digital age in parenting Um I think telling the the boys to you know just give having that discipline of less time mm. on on their on on their gadgets mm-hmm. and that has been a slight challenge but we've managed to put that um it's now under control yeah and um yeah this this been challenging you know for parents a lot of parents out there yeah, actually for sure. parents. screen time mm-hmm. screen and time. i've noticed also obviously i'm not a parent so i can't judge but i observe there are also parents that i feel can take it to the other side too far away you know you have to yeah. sit next to me if you want to be on your phone okay that's 20 minutes up you know what i mean it mm-hmm. can be very like overbearing mm-hmm. sometimes as well yeah. but yeah, yeah um i think for us we we have not been as you say on the extreme mm-hmm. in terms of control we have trusted you we have trusted everyone mm. even the boys that they are doing the right thing so to us like judy they said that screen time there's also to me is content mm. yeah. i was going to say are you concerned yes. at all about you know, the so internet now is you can access anything anything yeah. yes mm. but we just have a trust mm. that they are doing the right things mm. or they are not you know communicating with some people that are predators predators mm. or people from out there who are not the right people mm. yeah. but we trust that they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's a concern. For sure. I think the good thing as well is for example if you think of um Dan and Andy they've got me and Visa as well who are mm. lingering or also seeing stuff and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Although I think even from my perspective things like TikTok for example you just can't control what content mm. comes up um mm. to some extent but yeah. yeah. Okay, so what's one piece of advice that you would have for someone who wants to raise kids? I'll say raise your own kids, don't leave them out there uh to be raised by their peers. Mm. Mm. Why am I saying that? Because I've experienced um I've worked with children who were left to raise themselves or have their peers raise them mm. spend time with your children instill the values mm. that you want the beliefs so be there for your children and um teach them mm. train them love your kids and i'll say a lot of children out there who seem to be um misdirected or children with challenges or people with challenges people even end up in jail for example this is an example mm-hmm. 
is a, a people who have lacked love mm. and attention in their life. Mm. So mm. all I can say is you brought those children into your life. You need to love them. You need to spend time with them. You need to teach them. Mm. 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 And if you can't do that, there are correct pathways and learn and systems and everything like that. Yeah, too. yeah learn actually is a good one. Learn yeah. firstly. Mm. Ask questions. Mm. Lots of parenting courses out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah I think it's uh, definitely the same thing that uh, as a parent or as a family, you need to have values. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm. we need to have values. Therefore, when you are either the mother, the dad, you want mm. to mentor your children because they will learn from you. Mm. The way you speak, the way you, you or the way you talk, mm-hmm. what you do. They're mm-hmm. copycats. They, mm-hmm. Yes, they're copycats. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm. You know? So you call them tape recorders. Yes, well. tape recorders, <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> so what you what basically I'm trying to say is be a model for the children. Mm. Teach them, like Judith said, have the values and say, This is how I want my family to be. Mm. And let the voice from your house be louder than voices out there. Yeah. Like what Judith said, don't let your kids be uh, uh, modeled or Influenced. learn from, from the outside. Mm-hmm. They should actually learn from you from inside. So my voice should be louder mm-hmm. than the voices out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yes. really good. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, just one fun question before we get to the end because it, a little bit of a debate online mm. as well. Would you rather have a billion dollars transferred into your account right now or have dinner with Jesus? I would have dinner with Jesus. <laughs> would you really that? Yeah. Over a billion dollars in your yes. account. Yes. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because I believe that once I have a dinner with him, there's so much that I can discuss with him. There's so much that I can ask from him and there's more benefit. I think I'll, what I'll benefit from that dinner is more than a billion dollars. Do you think it would be the same as just praying then? <laughs> or reading your Bible? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, like you we... know, Jesus being Jesus, the one that we've been taught about, the one mm-hmm. we know, um, has got so much to offer than just reading a bible so he's bigger than that than yeah. just the bible so there is worth is priceless mm. it's worth more than one billion so one billion is nothing okay daddy what's your answer that's all for me okay you're one billion i'm getting one billion yeah, i'm getting one billion for sure we'll see you when we oh, get to heaven <laughs> yeah why because because i know that i'm a child of god mm-hmm. and i've got promises that i will go to heaven and I'll see him even tomorrow or next year. About I'll have a billion now <laughs> and achieve what I need to achieve. And then uh, from there, I still I I don't have to sin or to be a bad person with that one billion. <laughs> I will get that one billion and achieve what I need to achieve in this world. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I die or whenever we meet in the clouds, we go to heaven. You can have dinner then. <laughs> you can have dinner well, then. It's, yeah, quite, it's the quite interesting that you two have the same um, answer because your characters are similar as well. I see a, a money lot. mindset. <laughs> yeah, when I look at you, Gugu, mm-hmm. and you know, just um, watching you, your character and everything, you've got so much um, or so many characteristics that you've taken from your dad. Mm-hmm. So that answer just proves that it's just so funny. So you still stick by your answer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I still stick by it. Alrighty. Um, the very last question. This is a question we ask all the time on More Life. Mm. What does More Life mean to you? Mm. Mm. Deep. So More Life is, those two words are very deep for me. They mean that these more or there are more things to look forward to in life Mm -hmm. and they mean that there's so much to look forward to Um, they mean that your program intends to energize to invigorate Mm -hmm. to bring hope Um, uh, yeah so that's what it it means a lot to me yeah Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Okay. Mm. So for me, more life, as soon as someone says more life, mm. I see it in two stages. There's life. What is life? That's mm. my first question. So it's life or living. Mm. And then there's more of that. Yeah. So when we say someone is living, someone has got life. Even Jesus is the way, the mm. truth, and whatever. He's, he has got life. So what it means is more of, if you're a Christian, it's more of Jesus, more of the spirit in you. Mm. If you are saying, you know, you are living big with this, it's just saying more of this. Mm. Mm. So more life is just more in what we do. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you everybody for tuning into this episode of More Life. I hope you had a good time. I've actually really enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it as well? Yeah. Oh, good. It's been exciting. Mm. I mean, I really enjoyed um, uh, this session, and I hope you'll invite us again. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Looking forward to some more chats. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what to expect. Like, um, you know, you always catch me. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Like. So I was like, oh, I don't know what to expect. But uh, thank you so much for having us and asking those questions. They really made us think a bit deep mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. reflect. And yeah. And it's only the start. We're surface level this time because I wanted to not scare you away. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will see you in the very next episode of More Life. More love and more life to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.